Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to share with you some of the tools that I cannot live without as a UX designer. So instead of checking Slack or email, I've resorted to only checking my Google Calendar because my whole thought process is if it was something that was super, super urgent, or if I'm going to get fired for the day, then it will come in the form of a meeting. And just looking at my calendar, it looks like there's nothing new in the morning, so everything is good. We can get started and get productive. can't live without is my 14 inch macbook pro so i already have a video on my channel talking about it and unboxing it which you can find in the card above one of these spots and also in the description below if you're interested in checking it out so i won't talk about it too much but i basically use my macbook pro every single day for work and while i don't think it's completely necessary to have a three thousand dollar laptop to use to be a ux designer this thing is an absolute powerhouse and i absolutely love working on it the monitor and the visuals on it are just so incredibly beautiful the keys feel really good to type on the trackpad is huge and it's just a really amazing tool that i feel so happy about that I get to work with. Next, I know you guys kind of already saw it before, but it is my Moft carry sleeve. So Moft was generous enough to give me this beautiful carry sleeve that also doubles as a stand. So I got this in the classic nude color, which fits really nicely with my overall aesthetic for my setup and also my setup back there on my dual monitor. Even though I work remotely, I do like to take my meetings in different parts of the house. It really depends on my mood or or I guess even like if my husband is working and having a meeting at the same time but I really like the freedom to be able to move around. This carry sleeve has an extra pocket on the inside and that just lets me store my phone and my charger so I don't have to carry around everything in my hands and risk dropping like a very important piece of technology when I'm going between like the different areas that I want to do my meetings in. But I do have a quiet morning today so we are going to stay here and I like to connect my MacBook to my ultra wide a Samsung monitor. So this is a super beautiful monitor and I absolutely love working off of it and especially because when you walk into this room it's kind of like the centerpiece or the showpiece. You just like walk in and bam it's a really beautiful monitor with incredible specs on it. And before I got this I wasn't really an ultra wide monitor kind of person. I was always a dual monitor person which you can see from my other setup. Oh and don't mind the painter's tape. I have been meaning to put shelves up for such a long time but the thought of having to like put a hole in the wall is actually very scary so that's why I've been putting it off for so long. But yeah back to the monitor it feels really nice to work off of and it's kind of like I use it as a dual monitor but it doesn't have the bezel in the middle right so I can choose how I want to size all of my different screens and tabs however I want to and it just feels very flexible to work off of. The last thing I'm going to do is turn on my Govi lights they're right behind my monitor and it's just going to help me set like a very nice productive mood. So I have this little light peach thing going on and I really enjoy it. Now let's get to work. I've definitely developed a sort of muscle memory now to open all of my favorite apps and most used tools as soon as I open my computer. So I'm just gonna walk you through all of the tools that I like to keep on my computer open at all times when I'm working. The first one is Slack. So Slack is our ultimate messaging tool. We use it to connect with the multiple teams at my company, receive company updates, complete our asynchronous standup, and just like talk to each other. The great thing about Slack too is that I am also part of other workspaces in my Slack so that I can collaborate with teams outside of our company. So by going to these other channels or to these other workspaces, I can just talk to people that are outside of our company without having to download another app. And it just makes it really, really nice to work in. Next is Tandem. So Tandem is a new tool for me and I learned about it when I started working at my current company. But basically it's like Think, think of it 
as like streaming with your coworkers. It's honestly becoming one of my favorite tools to use and something that I just have to have as soon as I open up my computer. But in tandem, you basically have these rooms and you're able to join in them whenever you want. But everyone is kind of just working together and you're not feeling like you have to talk the entire time you're just there so it kind of makes you feel like you're streaming with them or you're working at the same table or at the same room with them I guess and the best thing about it is that it takes away that barrier of having to set up a meeting with someone in order to get that face-to-face -face time you don't have to like go through a calendar and like pick a time set it up wait for an invite or accept an invite before you finally get to talk so to someone and by getting rid of that barrier it's really changed the way that we work together and it's changed the way and like the speed it takes for us to get design feedback or developer feedback because it's so easy to just pop in or if you're already in a room just working together I can just share my screen or I can be like hey I have a question or what do you guys feel about this particular interaction and it makes it so much easier for us to work together closely without feeling like we have to bombard each other with meetings and like fill up each other's calendars. And honestly, it just feels really nice. We're not always talking about work. So it's just been a really good experience for us to get to know each other better and also work collaboratively. Okay, so everything else pretty much is in Google Chrome, which is my favorite browser to use. And this is the order that I keep my tabs. So the first and the leftmost one is Gmail. So Gmail is my favorite and only tool for emails. And I have it on my phone as well, but I make sure to turn off my notifications for Gmail during my off hours. Again, just to promote that work-life balance and that separation. My next tab open is Google Calendar, which you guys have already seen. And then we have Linear. So Linear is our ticket tracking app and you guys, I really like it so much. It's really like very minimalistically designed. It's very sleek and it's best to use when you know all the different key commands. You literally feel like one with the machine. You can go so fast on Linear and the workflow is just really, really intuitive and really, really nice. So we use this tool to track all of our tickets in our sprint and our backlog. And I usually have it set to the My Issues page. So you can see all of my tickets in review all of the ones that I have in progress, my to-do list for the sprint, and also my backlog. So I do like always seeing my backlog as well because sometimes other members of the team will add tickets into the design backlog for me to take a look at and it just really helps me plan for my next sprint. The next tool is Figma. Now I don't I don't even know if I need to talk about Figma. You guys already know Figma is like the ultimate design tool. It's where we design our features, where we create our presentations, do our prototyping, and maintain our design system. For today, the first thing I have to do is review some merge requests from the developers. This afternoon, I have a meeting with a company. So they have an app that they're building and we want to integrate it into our own app. So we're going to have like a meeting to discuss what kind of features they have, what they're able to offer, and any limitations or constraints when it comes to how we can customize it and finally I have like a learning session with the rest of the developers and we're probably going to talk about like pixels and RAM and like how we want to organize and use those to create our responsive app. So let's get started and review some merge requests. Since most of the team works in Eastern Canada they're about like four hours or so ahead of me. So the first thing I usually like to do in the mornings is make sure I get to any questions or review any merge requests that the developers have. Because by the time that I start working, which is usually like nine to 9.30, they are like already eating lunch and their whole morning is gone. So I wanna make sure I'm not like blocking them when they only have about like four hours or so in the afternoon for their work day. So let's review some merge requests. And these are requests basically made by developers who want to merge their code and their like new feature or whatever they were working on into our production version of the app. We use a tool called GitLab in order to do this. And basically what happens is that once a developer feels like they are finished with a new feature, or a new like or they fix the bug or anything like that where it changes the code they create a merge request and I get added as a reviewer to take a look at it especially from like the interaction and visual portion of it like I don't look at the code or anything to make sure that it all works according to the design and there's no bugs or any like unpredicted behaviors happening when interacting with it. So the devs actually did like a really cool and a very, very nice thing where I can just click this button that says view app. And instead of having to like clone the repo and 
run in on my computer and install everything in order to view what their changes are, I just have to click this button and I'm able to see what it is. So actually this brings up a really good point about another tool that I use a lot, which is called One Password. And One Password is a tool that you can download onto your computer or into your browser as an extension. And you basically sign in with a super safe password, like a super secure password, like the one the, the basically the one password that you have to remember and using that password and getting into one password how many times am i going to say password in this club okay so by signing in with your super secure password you then get access to all of the login credentials like usernames and passwords that are used in the company so this is really cool because it's easy to get access to accounts that you might need without feeling like you have to ask people for it and also sharing it in like not secure means. I think this is like more of a problem when you are in like a real in-person office because sometimes like, and it's really bad to do this, people will share usernames and passwords in like a sticky note or they'll write it down for you or whatever. And that's not very secure, especially if you're working at like a company with like a lot of people. Okay, so I'm just gonna sign in to my 1Password and use one of the test accounts so that I can go through the app and look at all of the new changes in there. So when I'm reviewing these merge requests, I really like to just take screenshots or leave comments on GitLab and then I usually just take the developer who is working on it. Another thing that I feel like honestly works better for us and it really depends on timing is that I will actually just go into tandem and then talk to the developers there so I can share my screen. I don't have to like write out a comment and it works really well, especially if there's something like off with the interaction or if the interaction doesn't match with what was designed. So just like not having to write down a comment and do all that extra work and being able to talk in real time, that has really sped up our whole feedback process. And sometimes when I'm reviewing these changes, I also like to use the browser inspector just to see like what kind of styling is happening here or if i feel like you know maybe it doesn't match the design entirely or even if the design is off a little and i want to say like make this bigger make this smaller change the margin change the padding i can actually just like do it inside the browser inspector and see what it looks like for myself and it's so much faster so that i can like give them real and accurate numbers instead of just like make it bigger and make it smaller or anything like that. So I am just gonna keep working on this for a little bit longer and then review the rest of these merge requests coming in. Another lazy afternoon. So we just got back from lunch and I changed my shirt because I have my meeting with the company that we're going to do an integration with coming up in a few minutes. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to take the meeting downstairs just because I think Josh has a meeting later on today too. But I feel like I should put on a necklace just so like I look a little bit more put together today. So I like all of them but I think I'll go with the pinwheel today and my tennis bracelet. So this bracelet and my necklaces are gifted from a brand called Gingerberry. If you're interested in trying out some of their jewelry then you can use my code charlie35 and you'll get 35% off your first purchase. So now that I am ready to go let's go downstairs and do our meetings. When I was a little child would see magic in the world around me now i often get so tired it's harder just to be fascinated breathing free since I knew this meeting was going to happen today, yesterday I actually spent some time and like went through their website and wrote down a bunch of questions that I want to ask during our meeting. And I do this in an app called Bear, which has long been one of my favorite note-taking apps. It's a really beautiful app. The interactions are super nice. Everything is like designed very, very well. And it feels really smooth to write on. So the meeting is gonna start soon and it feels a little weird to me sometimes when I'm in these meetings where people are pitching to me instead of me being on like the consulting side and everything so I don't know it's kind of fun but it's, it's definitely like a little bit weird still. <laughs> Hi nice to meet you I'm Charlie and I am the lead product designer. Put on my rain boots my favorite chiffon dress I don't care today what the neighbors might say 
So in my final meeting today, I'm going to have a meeting with the developers on the team and we're just going to talk about the differences between pixels and rem and deciding which one we want to use going forward. So for all of the development teams that I've been working with since I started as a UX designer, I always add both pixel and rem in case like a developer has any preference on how they want to implement things. So that's what we're going to talk about today and for all of our like video calls and meetings, we we use Zoom in order to like facilitate them, but personally, like I do find myself missing Google Meet quite a bit. My favorite feature is just being able to like go to the meeting and seeing who's already in the meeting before actually deciding to join or not. And Zoom doesn't really let you do that, but like otherwise, it's it's a pretty good video calling software. I just miss that little bit about Google Meet. I think it's because like. I'm a little introverted and I'd rather not always be like the first one in a call or like in a call with only one other person in there and having to like make small talk because that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> so we just finished that call and it's pretty much the end of the day but I do want to like kind of go over what we ended up talking about but basically we had to decide between whether or not we wanted to use pixels or rem i've always offered both and it's honestly very easy in order to like convert it so we use like for 16 pixels it equals one rem and like 32 is two and then you just kind of like keep going like that there's also a pixel to rem converter that i can link in the description uh actually maybe i'll just link all the other tools that i talked about in this video but yeah i use that website a lot especially when i started out because i was a bit slow, I guess, when it comes to converting. After a while, I feel like it's kind of like baking where you just start to memorize like what is what. But during the meeting, we talked a little bit about accessibility, which is where REM really like stands out. So we referenced the web content accessibility guidelines, which I can also link. And it's also another really good tool just to like know and to have into your, your like UX repertoire or UX toolbox. It's also really great if you can put that onto your resume. Accessibility is super important. The thing with REM is that you're basically making the calculation off of the desktop, which is really good for helping you calculate what size of font should be used on a particular screen. So in those cases, I think we might go back to REM only for fonts and then for everything else, we'll use pixels. And with that, we are finished for the day. So I'm gonna just finish it off by journaling on my iPad. And I do this a lot, you guys have seen this a lot. My favorite tool to use is GoodNotes 5. So it's hard for me to buy an app, but this one was definitely worth it. I have like five or six different notebooks in my GoodNotes bar. I'm just gonna go into my work one and then I'm gonna start writing out my journaling for the day. And this brings us to the very end of this video. I had so much fun filming this and I I didn't even realize, like I know I'm gonna be editing this pretty soon, hopefully getting it up for you guys in like the next week or so but yeah like i definitely have a lot of tools that i don't even realize that i use throughout the day and i know when i'm editing this there's gonna be like a lot more that i didn't even get to show you guys but yeah i hope you guys enjoy this video thank you guys so much for watching as always and i will see you guys in the next one bye